The idea of preserving the natural world and creating a legacy for generations to come is a religious issue. Part of embracing our life is to not only know what we're doing here, but to know how we're doing it, and to also know the kind of impact we're gonna have once we leave the Earth. What Eternal Reefs is doing is take people's cremated remains, we mix it with liquid concrete, and form artificial reefs, habitat for fish and sea life. When a cultural change is going to happen successfully, it's going to have the voice of religion, or it's not going to happen. This is a way for my husband, Oliver, to become part of something useful, even after he has died. Seeing our people really embracing their responsibility um, as that of stewards of the Earth. If you study and know what being a steward means, and you're true to your faith, you lead a simpler, more efficient, and less wasteful life. By creating eternal reefs, you're actually creating something positive for the environment. As a Hindu, um, I really believe in, in everything I have returning to the earth. I think that putting people in wooden caskets and putting them in the ground is probably wasteful. Simply keeping myself out of um, a pesticide-laden box <laughs> pumped full of embalming fluid um, and, and, and living in that state for a long time. I'd rather, um, I'd rather be, be put back to the earth in a way that's most environmentally friendly. I'm Don Brawley. I'm the founder of Eternal Reefs. The warming of the oceans does impact the reefs. It removes the habitat for all the fish and sea life. And if we totally remove the reefs from the ecosystem, the natural cycles of the ocean would basically break down. And what we do is take people's cremated remains, we mix it with liquid concrete and form artificial reefs. We then place a bronze plaque on the memorial and place them in the ocean as a final resting place for the individual. By creating eternal reefs, you're actually creating something positive for the environment by creating this new structure that will sustain all this new life. We originally started developing the reef ball concept. We tried a number of different things to create the proper shape. We wanted the water to pass through the modules as they would in a natural reef. We wanted to create habitat on the inside that would protect the fish, as well as an outside layer, which would create the substrate for the little buds of life to grow and form. We designed something that mimicked the natural coral heads. It mimicked so you would get a natural setting for all the life and things to occur. Within just a short period of time, we've created 200,000 reefs out there, and now we're really talking about making a substantial impact on our ocean's ecosystems. Today we're in Dania Beach, Florida, which is a little south of Fort Lauderdale. We're having the viewing for our memorial reefs that are going to be placed off Golden Beach tomorrow. And the families are here getting to see the memorials. And in just a few minutes, we're going to be having the military honors for some of our fallen veterans. My husband Oliver passed away. He actually chose this for himself. This is a way for him to become part of something useful even after he has died. After the casting was finished, it seemed to be easier for me to maybe release him. Um, and I was doing better emotionally until I came back here today. First memorial reef to be placed is the memorial reef for Oliver Edwin Akinpah. It's, it's, it's 
so interesting how you can be so happy for someone and sad at the same time. Every time we do an Eternal Reefs project is special. All the people are special that come together and help participate in building the reefs and dedicating the reefs. The memorial reef for Robert Michael Latham has been successfully placed. If we could have just 2% of the cremation families move in this direction, we'd be placing over 20,000 reefs a year at no cost to the government, doing it the right way for the right reasons. What we would like to see is more and more people be exposed to this and realize the positive impact this can make on our world in general. The spiritual way is also to live in a way that, that respects and honors all of God's creations. When my time comes, when I have to answer for what I've done in my life, I can be really proud of it. Increasingly what we're seeing is a greater connection in people's minds and hearts between the spiritual world and the natural world.